So the, the other part of the, the test, well, you, you get the result from the test, which gives you an age and a, like a score, right? An immunotype. And then you also offer like advice or supplements to try to reduce your age. So can you talk a little bit about the kind of advice that's offered or, or the supplements? Absolutely. So what happens is we know that uh, systemic chronic inflammation has, I think, uh, uh, one big uh, contributor, which is exposome, and it will be expressed in different ways, depending on how you respond to the ex exposome. Um, so you can stop the trigger, which is obviously you have to, um, because if you are keeping that trigger ongoing, um, then you're taking your intervention uh, likely may not change as dramatically as if you mm -hmm. also stop the trigger. So mm -hmm. there's uh, the symptom, which is inflammation and the trigger, right? Um, so we, we take our profiles uh, and we build what we call gene compound interactome. There's 1.6 billion interactions between genes and chemicals. And then we ask the algorithm, this AI, AI machine learning based, uh, to give me the combination of compounds that will work for this particular profile or immunotype. Mm -hmm. And what we're focusing at the moment is the generally recognized as safe uh, compounds. The, or the, we call them immunoactives, uh, but they range from uh, coenzymes to um, micronutrients and um, different nutraceuticals as well. Okay, so a couple of questions in there. I mean, I assume you can't create uh, like custom supplements for each person based on their input. So, so you must put them in buckets and say, well, well, this would be the best one for you. Is that how it would work? That is exactly right. That's what the immunotype um, comes, comes in. Okay. Um, yeah. These are clusters of, of individuals that, that, that can be clustered only by the deviations of the proteins they show, their profiles. Okay. And and the other question was, so as you said, like removing the trigger is going to be one of the things that's going to be very important. Will you be able to identify the trigger? Because I may not know what it is that's triggering my immune system. Exactly. Um, so we that's the one size fits all recommendations. Uh, this is a um, educational program. Mm. Um, that we're building to you know, improve the life of individuals of the population that will be uh, or of our customers. Um, but we also want to treat the symptom. If mm -hmm. you don't treat the symptom, then you're causing harm, you're causing damage. And so the personalized supplementation uh, is basically um, a, a, a treat the symptom in a, in a personalized manner mm -hmm. solution to systemic chronic inflammation. Right. So, I mean, if I had toxic mold or something, you wouldn't be able to identify that from, from my biomarkers? Um, not at the moment. No. We expect that um, in uh, maybe after uh, certain milestones, I would say half a million to a million users, we will be able to correlate exposome, specific exposome um, um, insults to specific mm. immunotypes. We're not there yet, but I'm sure we, we will mm. we'll be able to get there because we have an extensive uh, lifestyle and exposome uh, survey that we will be able to cross link um, with, with the different immunotypes in our customers. Okay, yeah, that would be... Really interesting. So you did, actually, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I was just going to say that um, in addition to this work, in the current study that we're doing, we're measuring uh, metabolomics. And metabolomics is currently um, a surrogate of the exposome. So, so we may be able to get there sooner than than what I was uh, ex that that, that I, I, I'm expecting to by measuring by simply measuring the metabolomic signature, and then be able to map that to certain exposures. Mm 
So we are actually developing a program um, at the buck to map metabolomics to exposure. And so you will be able to infer what you were eating last night, for example, from your... (laughs) (laughs) Right. And whether it was good for you or not. Exactly. 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 Okay. But in 2017, you did a paper and I think you showed that like caffeine was very good for anti-inflammation. Is that correct? (laughs) Could you talk about... Yeah. Yeah. So the findings were around uh, the inflammasome machinery. Um, The inflammasome is a scaffold protein that enables maturation of inflammatory proteins like IL-1 beta, interleukin-1 beta. And so it turns out that increased expression of the genes in this particular, this NLRC4 sensing um, inflammasome were correlated with uh, hypertension and uh, mortality and uh, pulse wave velocity, elevated arterial stiffness, and a number of uh, detrimental outcomes. And so when we look at the different uh, metabolomics uh, data, we identified that caffeine and its metabolites were negatively correlated with uh, these inflammatory uh, signatures that were only uh, part of a uh, chronic state we measure in four to five years. And so what happens is when we do the actual experiments in vitro, we are able to downregulate, so bring down the expression of this gene NLRC4. That's what we call a signal one of this whole process of inflammatory uh, inflammasome uh, activation. Bottom line with, uh, met- with, with this caffeine, Um, uh, experiment, we were able to demonstrate that caffeine blocks signal one of the inflammasome and therefore decreases IL-1 beta production significantly. And that is associated with better outcomes. Right. And it seemed to be dose dependent, although the upper doses were really quite large. (laughs) Yes, it's it's linear. (laughs) So after, 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 after those results, I, I doubled my, my, my triple espresso but, <laughs> uh, daily. So I now bought a very fancy uh, Italian machine that I really like and enjoy my espresso uh, several times a day. 